Hello and welcome to Motivation Monday. I'm here sitting uh, by the river in Bundaberg because I was on my way home in the car and I realised I wasn't going to make it and I didn't want to run into an area with no reception. So um, I'm here, it's very beautiful, it's also very hot in the car. Anyway, so our Motivating Monday might be a little sweaty and quite brief. Today I wanted to talk to you about something we've, we've discussed a little bit in the past um, and the, it's really the excuses people come up with for not training their horses and the biggest one I hear is I didn't want to ruin him and, and people say I didn't do anything because I didn't know exactly what to do um, and I didn't want to do it wrong. And I think, to be honest, if, if you're here listening to this, you're most unlikely to be the sort of person that is going to do it wrong. Um, and I just want to say, go out and have a go. Do something. Because doing something is so much better than not doing anything. Because the horse is not going to learn anything. Well, it will learn some stuff you maybe don't want it to know on its own in the paddock. Um, and if you approach the horse, if you are handling it on a regular basis and still too afraid to try and teach it things, it is still going to be learning things and probably things you don't really want it to know. I had a really interesting um, comment on my Facebook page yesterday from somebody who I've known for quite a few years and is a very experienced rider and trainer herself and she's had one of those special horses do you know the ones that um, we just, we look out in the paddock and we think oh they're so beautiful I never thought I'd own a horse that beautiful and we, I've got one I think you know anyone who's owned a few horses in their life have one of those special ones and you're almost too scared to touch it because you think, oh my God, it's so special. <laughs> anyway, she has one of these horses, a big black one, a bit like mine. Um, and, and she had felt this about it. But what she had done was she'd done quite a bit of foundation work with me. So she taught the horse really good give to the bit and shoulder control. And so every time she went out and said, oh, I don't really know what to teach. She thought, oh, I, I do know what I can do. I can do give to the bit shoulder control so this didn't even involve riding the horse this was just ground um, and she felt safe and, and everything was fine in that zone the horse understood it so the horse was getting praised a lot and and it was all going very well for both of them anyway as her confidence increased she started to ride the horse and what she was saying in the comment yesterday was how amazed she was that when she did get on it had so much there already because it had all the give to the bit work and all the shoulder control work so immediately she jumps on she picks up the reins the horse drops into frame is soft in the bridle and is easy to control and she can move it around she can move its feet wherever she wants it to go she had all of this so you know not only had she not wasted a time but she got this really really solid foundation from which to build and i always say it doesn't really matter much to the horse whether you're riding or you're on the ground, as long as you're teaching it things you want it to know. So the give to the bit work forms the cornerstone of all of my foundation training. And a lot of people look at that work and say, oh, I don't need that because I don't need frame, I don't need the horse to be in a pretty outline because I'm just gonna go trail riding. But the fact is, the give to the bit work and the horse and the frame and the outline has really very little to do with dressage or winning ribbons or anything else. It has everything to do with safety, it has everything to do with communication with your horse, it has everything to do with teaching your horse about negative reinforcement and mostly, first and foremost, about relaxation. Because the give to the bit work is where you start to build that bubble. So it's within that work that you form that wonderful, safe place of communication with your horse and you build that big, strong bubble with gift to the bit. And you can take that with you, as this girl did in the comment. You know, she, she'd done all this work on the ground and by the time she got on, because the horse had already been backed, you know, she'd already been on its back before. That wasn't a problem. Um, by the time she went on, she, she had this big secure bubble of communication and she took that off and, and rode the horse off with it. And went, oh wow, you know, and she didn't even know she was doing that really. So what I'm saying is don't 
put off doing something just because you're not sure of all the stages. Because like Amanda showed us, if you can get that much done just on the ground, not even getting on the horse, by the time you get on the horse, that's the next step, you've already got this wonderful solid foundation. So she's got all that shoulder control. Now she can start taking that places and really start working on speed of them gay and she can start once you can control her shoulders separately you can then control her hindquarters independently as well and the sky's the limit you go on and on but it's this important groundwork foundation that sets you up for success the other great thing about the give to the bit is that you can you can do five minutes of it so let's say you're really busy and you've only got you know Whatever you've got, you can actually do some really, really good work. I think you're much better off spending five to ten minutes with a horse doing some very productive work like give to the bit than you are spending an hour with the horse lunging it around and getting it fit. Because there's nothing, you know, the only thing more dangerous than an unfit, uneducated horse, of course, is a fit uneducated horse that you've been running around getting fit on the lunge. So, you know, let's take that time and use it to do something really useful and then when that will build your really really solid stepping stone for the next level and that's all I wanted to say today is um, to get you motivated go out and start something even something really little now if you don't know what to start and you don't yet have access to um, the can do equine online training system you can go and get yourself access for $47 a month you could buy one month you could do all that give to the bit work and the shoulder work you could watch everything there's there's hours on there to watch and it's really well structured so you will get out there and do it and then you can discontinue if you want to or you can keep it on and keep progressing with your work it works like that it builds on each lesson builds on the other one you can start at lesson number one give to the bit and then work your way up or you can you know a lot of people do a couple of months work and then they give the horse a rest and they go off for a few months and they come back again that also works really well as well the thing to do is to just make a start and you know, when's the best time to, to plant a tree? If you want a 40 foot tree in your garden, when's the best time to plant it? Yeah, 10 years ago, absolutely. When's the next best time? Right now. Same with training your horse. Best time to start, right now. Okay, um, if you're not ready, go along to the website anyway, canduequine.com and pick up some free training and make a start. There's some great little lessons in there. You can go out today and teach your horse some of those things and you will see just how easy it is to make a start. Once you make a start, you won't look back. That's the first step though. Go make a start. Have a great week. Bye.